Okay, let's begin to dive into this mystery of the meaning of this iterated or double integral. Um, as you recall from the last little segment, we evaluated this double integral with this x squared y expression is the integrand, and we got 20. And so our question really is, now what does it mean, this 20, or what could it mean? So let's take a quick little flashback to calculus one. And remember that when we integrated this or something like it for the first time in Calc one, we thought of this or nicknamed it area. We later learned that it could measure many expressions. We found volumes of different types of rotations and moments and centers of mass and work and surface area and arc length. I mean, if you can find a way to add up small pieces, this is the ultimate adding machine. So let's just go back here. If this was area, um, what might you guess is the meaning of that double integral? Well, if you guessed volume, that would probably be the, the easiest to understand analogy to the single integral in Calc 1. That this, is, this could be volume. We will again find out that it could measure far more than volume. But what we're going to look at is what is the meaning of this and this combined? Um, as I indicated before, if this inside integration is in terms of y, then these are y boundaries. And the outside um, is in terms of x, and that makes these x boundaries or limits of integration. So what we're doing here is we're studying what's called the region of integration. And I'll try to give you a basis for that with this little picture. x-axis, y-axis in two dimensions. Um, it clearly says here that x is from 0 to 2. And then it says here that y goes from 1 to 4. So there's y is 1 and y is 4. And I want you to think of this as clear description of, in this case, a rectangle. And like you heard me using in class, um, think of this as the foundation. And there's going to be a building that sits on top of this foundation. Well, it turns out that this is that building. That is dimension number three here. That's the Z equals. More about that later. I'm just giving you some paraphrased versions now. So the building has maybe an unusual shape. All right, let me see if I can sort of generate this. Let's say it's tilted at a weird angle. What we're doing is trying to find the volume between that rectangular base and the building, which is floating above the paper, assuming that these are positive values when we integrate. This is a loose description of what it means. The textbook, of course, gives a lot more um, of a breakdown in, in terms of breaking the region into uh, little rectangular-like sections. It doesn't work too well when I draw and when I'm on camera. That's a bad combination. Now, let's take this and go a little further with it. The last video we had, we looked at this version. And we got a different answer. I think it was 42. This order switched, but not these boundaries. And so this is now saying X goes from one to four and Y goes from zero to two, which is different from what we just discovered. And if X goes from one to four and Y goes from zero to two, this is my rectangle. And the rectangle is the same size, but the problem is, is the third dimension right there is the same building. And it could be that the volume between my rectangle and my building is now, well, the building's taller here. 
So we had a larger number. I think it was 42 last time we did that. Finally, we had a third problem that we looked at. And in this problem, we had switched not only the order of the integration, but these limits or boundaries also switched. So this is now x, and this is now y. And y goes from 1 to 4, and x goes from 0 to 2. And you will see that the secret to having equal integrations when we switch the order, um, I'm just going to put a little footnote here. If we're going to switch the order of integration, that region, that picture in the xy plane, has to match. This is our secret. This is our, our, our uh, point that we're chasing after. All right, another example coming up soon.